Do you like this map, John? Or are you like, nah, fam, this map It's sucks. kind of hit or miss. Like, I sometimes <laughs> do miss. some... I guess they never miss, huh? I, I regretted saying those words as soon as they came out of my mouth. <laughs> Hey guys, how's it going? It's John from British Friend Games bringing you episode 2 of our newest series called Underrated Weapons. And today's weapon we're going to be going over is the 720 RPM auto rifle known as Valakadin. So when I got my Valakadin, I was able to get a pretty good roll on it. The roll came with extended barrel, small bore, extended mag, armor piercing rounds, dynamic sway reduction, rangefinder, in a range masterwork. Now, I wouldn't say that this is the best roll Valkadin could have. Um, I would definitely like to have ricochet rounds or possibly uh, high cal rounds cause a little bit of flinch to your opponent. And since this is a high RPM weapon, uh, rounds per minute in case you don't know what RPM is, but you probably know, just want to clarify. Uh, the fact that it has uh, armor piercing rounds on it does allow it to get a little more range, but the high cal rounds would cause more flinch, and it's huge because you're con uh, constantly firing. Dynamic sway reduction I do think is part of the god roll. Um, it really does help with increasing the accuracy of the weapon over time that you're pulling the trigger. And I really think it makes the weapon really powerful because you're continuously firing a high volume of ammunition downrange for such a long period of time because the magazine is big. It's 53 rounds. Also, rangefinder is huge. I wouldn't want to have steady rounds on this because I think range is really important for this weapon to duel well against all the other weapons out there. Uh, you're going to see in this video I'm able to hit from ranges that are pretty far away, uh, especially for an auto rifle at 720 rounds per minute. They're at decent uh, hand cannon ranges, so I do think rangefinder uh, is a really important key component. Uh, for the masterwork, I would have been okay with either getting range or stability. Having more stability is never a bad thing, increases your accuracy, but range is also important. The, the trickiest thing I think with auto rifles is finding a good balance between range and stability. Because if you don't have enough range and a lot of stability, yeah, you're going to hit your headshots, but you're not going to do the best amount of damage you can possibly do. And if you have a lot of range, but not a lot of stability, you're going to have a hard time keeping your reticle on your target. So, for this weapon's damage, it does 19 to the head and 13 to the body, which is really key. Because before that, it didn't have a lot of great stats before the patch in 2.1. 4.1, I believe the patch uh, was. So before that, the Valakadin um, only did uh, 18 to the head and 12 to the body. But after a 9% buff, it does now, like I said, 19 to the head and 13 to the body. The TTK before this uh, update was 0.83 seconds at 10 crits, one body, six resilience or less on a guardian. But now it's at 0.75 with uh, 10 crits. Uh, to four resilience guardians or less and the buff has really helped it make uh, auto rifles not so much become more meta but made them doable against more usable sorry not doable usable against more meta stuff um, before that they weren't really in the best spot because the thing is with auto rifles they're in a tricky situation they're able to duel at hand cannon range can, which can be pretty far but they can't duel at pulse rifle range. At pulse rifle range, they can't get their optimal TTK, they can't do their optimal uh, DPS output, and if you get too close, things like shotguns and sidearms are going to dominate you, especially shotguns, up close. So auto rifles are in kind of a weird spot. They need to be close enough where they can do the optimal DPS, but they can't be too far away. And so that puts them just outside of hand cannon range in certain situations, but also just far enough that you don't have to deal with shotgunners getting up close and personal with you. And the biggest thing I think this auto rifle can handle is shotgun rushers. There's going to be multiple clips throughout this where I'm dealing with shotgun rushers coming at me and I'm able to take them down in relatively 
uh, quick periods of time, but I need the space and the time to, de uh, to deal the DPS out on them before they can get to me and one-tap me with whatever shotgun they have in their hands. So I do think this auto rifle really does have great potential, and I'm not going to say it's the most meta weapon out there, but by far you can slay with this weapon more so than other auto rifles out there. I think this auto rifle got the best buff in the recent patch, and if you're just looking for an uh, loadout that's not every day, something you can switch up, have some fun with, go out and slay with, have a good time, I definitely think this is a weapon for you. Mind you, this is definitely not a weapon where you can just mindlessly go running around corners and expect to do well. You have to find that niche. You have to make sure that you're at the right range where you can do the most DPS without being in the ranges of all the other weapons and struggling to duel against them. This weapon can duel, especially with dynamic sway reduction, because what auto rifles are really good at is continual DPS you're continuously damaging a target over a period of time to get the highest um, damage on that target to get the lowest TTK. A hand cannon or scout rifle, even though nobody uses scout rifles, so I'm going to use hand cannons. I don't know why I said scout rifles. Hand cannons, you have to hit your shots and there's breaks in between the DPS. So there are single periods of DPS, whereas an auto rifle, you can have continuous DPS on a target, flinching them, and the best thing about it is, if you miss a few shots, that's okay. Your magazine is large, and you can easily correct it by moving your joystick over just a little bit to the right, left, up, down, what have you, and you're able to get back into that optimal DPS that you want to get. Whereas with a hand cannon, if you miss your shots, you're really going to pay for it. Granted, a hand cannon will definitely beat you at certain ranges, and a hand cannon does only need to be on their target maybe three times for a headshot, five times for a body shot, whereas you need to be on that target a lot longer for an auto rifle to be successful, which is why hand cannons are able to peak shot so efficiently. But all I'm saying is, this is an auto rifle I really think you guys should pick up from the gunsmith. You can just turn in uh, your gunsmith materials and get this weapon, and you can go out there and have a great time. I paired this up with uh, hand cannons and pulse rifles, and I found that pulse rifles were the best because I was able to hit targets from really far away with my blast furnace. Um, I was also able to do well with Outbreak Prime, and if I had a shotgun rusher or someone that was really close, I was able to hip fire this thing and be up in the air and accurately get them, do the optimal DPS, and I was able to take care of my target pretty quickly. So I think that this um, is a weapon that if you're looking for something new to spice up the game, because there's so many different variations and weapon combinations, there's so many different things you can do with this game, sticking yourself into this niche one type of uh, loadout is going to make the game really boring, and this is something I think you guys should try and pick up and have fun with it. I mean. Sometimes you're going to do well, sometimes you won't, but until you learn that niche area where you can do the optimal DPS and you have to stay in there, um, you won't have a great game every game. But when you do, you're going to have so much fun, you're going to slay out, you're going to have a great time with this weapon, and I really think you should pick this up. This is definitely a weapon, I think, that's extremely underrated in the Crucible, so pick it up and go get it, and you're going to have a blast with this thing once you learn how to use it properly and get the right roll. So, that's all for this episode. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to have a few more weapon episodes coming out pretty soon. I have three more, possibly four more on the way, just for myself. I know Patrick has a few. Um, really appreciate the support you guys have been giving with these episodes. Granted, we're still trying to figure ourselves out. We're still trying to figure out how to do this. Um, so not every episode will be as consistent or the same, but I really hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope we can discover new weapons for you guys to use and try out. So thanks again. I really hope you see you to see you in the next episode, but until then, take care of yourselves. See ya. Pulling ahead. Keep it that Sorry, dude. Uh, I know of my Protect me! me. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what was that? You don't noise? understand. I just killed 10 people. My what? God. And no, it was oh, not all. Hell no. To the no, no, no. Hell no. To the no, no, no. Hell to the no. Hell to the no. To the no, no, no. No, no.